Hello, I'm back. And I, I'm not going to do any updates on Amber Heard and Johnny Depp because the truth is I am so sick of both of them. I am. I'm just, I've, there's way too much information. It's just too much. And I don't know them like that. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't even hear this information from friends that are in bad relationships. <sighs> Especially Amber. She just is grating on me. And then I do. I love Johnny. You know, not. Yeah, okay. I could say as an actor. I've seen him in some really good, do some really good work. Uh, but yeah, that just. You know, that's what he's been doing with his rings. And I just can't. And she doesn't really have any evidence. That's, she has talked the last few she's had people come to her defense like Ellen Barkin and is that how you say her name I don't even know where the fuck has she been but for her to come out and say oh well Johnny's drunk all the time but she was drunk all the time as well they were both drunk all the time and he never hit her you know I don't know why she's a witness. I just don't know. I think she's really desperate for some attention. Maybe. I don't know. I used to like her. Okay. So yeah, I'm over the case and I'm going to talk about it when it's over, when they finally come to closing arguments and they decide, and then I'll come back and talk about it. But up until then, I'm not even watching it anymore. And it was, it was a good show. You know, it was like, damn, this shit's getting good. No, they had the friend, her friend come on, who was basically like, I don't know, living at the house. And the sister, you know, of course her sister is going to say what she wants her to say. They're all doing cocaine with him and partying and just crashing at the house and just, you know, freeloaders, I feel like. He had a lot of freeloaders that that came along with her. All right, I'm done. Okay. No more. All right. For some reason, I just feel like picking on, um, Tom Cruise. Somebody had written, written an article. Let me pull the article up. So it was an article about how Tom Cruise creeps them out. Tom Cruise creeps me out. Okay. First off, there's an article. <laughs> I guess I'm not the only one. There was an article article in 2013, but the one that I'm talking about is uh, 11 hours ago. And this is why it came up, because normally I just don't care about him. <sighs> no, I've never been a fan of his. I've never had a crush on him. Okay, let me go back. As far as a fan goes, I've been a fan of some of his work. Born on the 4th of July, he was so good in that. He really was. I hated Jerry Maguire. I couldn't stand that movie. And it had nothing really to do with the premise or the acting because I love Renee. It had everything to, to do with the music. You know, how every single time the son and Tom Cruise's character bonded, they'd be like, doo -doo 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 -doo, you know, the music that comes on out of nowhere and everything's in slow motion. And she, and then they show her and she's like, I just couldn't. I just couldn't. And then him, he was overacting the entire time. You know, he's just, he's an overactor sometimes. And that was one of those examples of that. So I didn't like that movie. I wasn't into Top Gun. I had a lot of friends that were, that were like, oh, that movie's awesome. It's like, uh, what else? Yeah, I just, I'm not a really big fan of his. I never have been, never will be. I do think he's done some good work and that's that just like with Johnny Depp it's the same thing I was never a big fan of the, his movies and had nothing to do with him personally it was the kind of movies they were always kind of weird and you know weren't really my type of movie but he has done some good work in other movies and so yeah same thing but different I actually think Johnny Depp is a cool person he seems really cool and Tom Cruise doesn't He's, he just seemed, he's super arrogant. 
It just, ugh. The one thing that turns me off the most in people and human beings in general is arrogance. Being too cocky, too arrogant. It's a, it's a huge turn off. There's no humility to him, you know? There's no side of him that's kind of like, it's hard to describe. Actually, it's not. It's just he is the poster boy for everything that turns me off. Same with um, Mark Wahlberg. Same with Jared Leto. There's certain actors. Matthew McConaughey. There's a list of actors that I cannot stand. And it's because of that reason. It's the arrogance. It's It doesn't matter how cute or hot they are. It's like, okay, you guys are kind of, you know, and freaking annoying. And I don't want to watch anything you're in. All right, so Tom Cruise, the one in 2000, the five reasons why Tom Cruise still creeps me out, and this was in 2013. Uh, place of garbage, I like that for much. Okay, number one, he's a Scientologist. Um, oh, what did I say about Scientology? I lost a friend to Scientology. I did. I still mourn her. I miss her. She was my best friend. Very funny really funny laughed like to laugh a lot like we laughed about everything and we were always delving into things that we were fascinated by you know like I don't know I could see why she fell for it she she was always that type that was easily susceptible to falling prey to a cult <laughs> you know what I mean she's like I could have seen her with um the Manson family totally and it's not because she's stupid. No, she's she was really smart. She is really, really smart. It's that she has this deep need for acceptance and love and to belong somewhere. So she would get her feelings hurt a lot. And she would, you know, if someone rejected her, it was like a tragedy, you know. And I was always there for her. I was her best friend. I helped her raise her kid who's also a Scientologist, and so therefore, I can't talk to her either. I'm a suppressive person, you know? So Scientologists don't like people that don't like their religion, who don't agree with it. And so, yeah, the last time I saw her, this is a sad story, but kind of funny. I was doing a farmer's market because I like to grow plants and put them in my own designer plants, a uh, planters that I made myself mosaic with certain words on them, like grow and you know, all of that, you know, people do that all the time now, but when I started doing it, nobody was. And so I would do these mosaics and they were really beautiful. And I would put plants in them that I grew and I would sell them at farmer's markets and God, this was a long time ago. I can't even remember. This is how long it's been since I've seen her. And I was in a relationship at that time. And sometimes she would call me when she's in LA and she'd say, oh, you know what, let's hang out. But this time I happened to be on her side of town, you know, like an hour away from LA or what have you. And um, I said, okay, you know, I'm doing this little farmer's market thingy. You should come over. And maybe after we can go to one of these cool little cafes and just hang out. And it's kind of a hippie town, you know, very cool, like laid back, a lot of crystals and, you know, sage, uh, speaking of sage. So we walk into this little cafe and there's this little outdoor patio through the back and we sit down and out of nowhere, I didn't even see him coming from anywhere, this hippie. <laughs> We're in hippie perfume oil, you know that smell, it's like the hippie, yeah. He just starts saging her. He has this bundle of sage and he just, for some reason, is obsessed with her and getting her clean. So he's just like up and down on her. And I'm like, what about me? What's, you know, why not me? He's like, no, you're fine, you're fine. You're totally cool, you're just chilling. He's like, she needs some sage, she's very, there's some, darkness here you know and he's saging her and she's just going get the you know get away but she doesn't say that she doesn't say fuck anymore the certain first off the old her would have been laughing her ass off 
And I was laughing instead. Instead, I was the one laughing because that's what we used to do when something ridiculous happened. And um, she, instead, she got mad at me. And she's like, why are you laughing? Tell him to get the fuck away. No. And she goes, get the F away from me. And I'm like, F? What are you referring to? <laughs> you know, like, just, it was so stupid. I said, can you kind of, like, let us be? We need you remember hanging out and you're disturbing us. Like, oh, I get it. I get it. You know, this is what you do. It's awesome, but you know, she just doesn't want to be saged. He goes, but she really, really needs saging. I, I, I'm sure she does. I, would you agree? You know, I asked her, I go, are you in a bad mood? What's going on? Cause you know, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it too. She's like, just get the F away from me. And I'm like, okay, whatever. She doesn't want to be saged. So he leaves for a while, but he's just still obsessed with her. And he keeps, keeps looking at her through the, the window, the outdoor, it had like a patio, patio doors. And he was behind the patio door with the sage and he, I saw him peeking in and she's like, what is, what's wrong with him? I'm like, I don't know. It's weird. And then the psychic comes in. Actually, she's a card reader. She comes over and she sits near our table and she goes for $5. Did you want me to read your cards? I go, yeah, absolutely. Cause that's what we used to do. Who doesn't want their cards being read? It's funny. And it's sometimes true. And so I went over there and I was just, you know, having my cards read and I'm like, wow, that's actually spot on. And um, I was really, really into the reading and I look over and the sager is back, but he's sitting there at the table and he just freaking her out. <laughs> so I got up and I go, okay, thank you for the reading. That's awesome. I'll give you $10 because you're really good. I got back over there and um, I said, oh, I was all excited. I'm like, oh, she says something about like the new car that I'm getting and you know, blah, blah, blah. I go, but I said, I'm having issues with the one I have. I don't have the money to get it fixed. And so the sage, the sage guy goes, um, why doesn't your friend help you, you know, pay for the, uh, the, to get your car fixed. I said, oh no, she doesn't have that kind of money. Yeah. I go, no, it's, and then she gets really pissed off and she goes, why would you say that to him? You don't even know him. How do you know? I don't have the money. And I was like, well, because you don't have the money. She the whole time I knew her and we were best friends, she didn't really have any money. I never asked her for anything. She never paid. Sometimes she would buy lunch, you know, but on the most part, she wasn't the type of person you went to when you needed money. And I helped take care of her kid and I paid for everything. She never paid me for babysitting, for food, for anything. And, um, there's a the time she went away to, um, train to be an airline stewardess and I took care of the kid and so did her grandpa but I just didn't even think to ask her it didn't even cross my mind and I knew I'd come up with the money because you know I had a st my clothing in all these stores I had this clothing line called yoga chicks but I also had this other side gig where I mosaic and sold plants so I was kind of like a hippie too and so she goes why would you say that I said, because you don't have the money and now you're a Scientologist and I know that they charge a lot of money. She goes, you don't know that. You don't know anything about Scientology. I go, my dad was friends with L. Ron Hubbard, kind of. I go, he didn't like him, but he used to come over to his apartment in New York, I said, and they used to make fun of him. He was kind of like weird. He was a sci-fi writer. I said, I know all about L. Ron Hubbard. So we got in this huge fight about it. And she wasn't, she didn't laugh. She didn't play. It was like, I've never seen this side of her. And I really didn't like this person that she became. Scientology took her personality away from her. It took, it took everything as far as I'm concerned. She was a shell. And that's why she needed to be saged because something was holding her down. Some darkness was holding her down and there was no lightness anymore. She just was so serious and so uptight and I thought Scientology was supposed to relieve all of that, you know, when you go to those, um, what are they called where they cleanse, they don't cleanse you, they make you admit all of this crap that's holding you back. I should know, clearing, they clear you, I think that's what it's called. <laughs> I mean, I watched the, 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 um, the show with Lee Remedy, so you would think that I would know what that is, but um, yeah, the Sea Org, and yeah, okay, so... Okay, so I'll read this in a second. I'm really having fun enjoying this conversation with all of you <laughs> about my Scientologist friend and her daughter. Okay, so she wasn't the same person and she goes, 
I go, oh, do you know what they, um, the psychic said? She said that I was just going to get a new car because I've been looking at one and I'm going to trade my old one in because it needs too much work and blah, blah, blah. She goes, that's such bullshit. And she goes, you know, you just need to like um, come with me to a meeting and go to get to go to Scientology meetings because you're all fuck. You're all messed up. She didn't say fuck. For some reason, the F word wasn't allowed anymore in that religion and whatever. And I said, Scientology is bullshit. And I don't have the money. I can't afford to be a Scientologist even if I wanted to. She goes, that's an excuse. You're just making up excuses. And I just started laughing. She goes, what's so funny? Why are you laughing at me? I said, I have to go. I said, I, I don't have time for this in my life. I said, I wish you the best. I really do. I love you and I miss you. But I don't even know who you are right now. I said, I'm not going to be a Scientologist. There's no way in hell I would ever give them money. I said, and the fact that you are makes me sad because I know how hard you work for your money. I go and I go, it's okay that you can't loan me money to fix my car. I get it. I said, I'm not, I wasn't trying to bash you. I was just telling the truth. And if this guy wants to save you out of nowhere on cue, he, he shows up, he comes around the corner and he just starts and she's like, I'm leaving. And she just takes off and I go off after her, but not after her, but I just walk off and go to my car and I go home. And that was it. She called me again, you know, and I was living with my ex and she asked me if I wanted to come to a meeting, you know, and I said, no, good, you know, but have fun. Have, if there's fun to be had at a Scientology meeting, you should have some fun. <laughs> and that was it. And I do, I miss her. I miss her daughter. I, you know, she's grown now and she's married and <sighs> you know whatever okay so he's a Scientologist this is the article she said I have deep respect for religious people they have a strong sense of faith that I never had however Scientology is not a religion Scientology is a cult absolutely if anything you have to pay for uh, to that degree where you have to give them all of your money to get ahead in that in that religion. If you don't have any money, they don't want you. And if they, if they do want you, it's because they want you to work for them for free. They'll send you, they'll put you in the Sea Org, and um, or they'll make you hand out flyers, and they make you work for it. It's like you you become their slaves. It's crazy. I can't even believe this is legal. And I know I'm going to get some hate from Scientologists, and I don't really care. Bring it, bring it. They don't scare me. And I know they have, they do dirty tricks. They do things that they try to scare you with. And, um, it's okay. You know, and, and the cops, they, they own the cops. I don't know how they do it. They don't pay taxes. And Alron Hubbard himself said the best way to make money in this country is to start a religion. And he said that when he was in Australia, <laughs> you know, he was like in America, the best way to make money. It's true though. So, um, so they have these schemes and training programs and Leah Remedy, who I love, she was shipped off to languish in the Sea Org. And by the way, I've read every book you could ever think of to read on Scientology. I was obsessed after my friend, you know, just, you know, it wasn't her anymore. I'm like, are you a freaking robot? Did they replace your soul? Did they steal your soul and replace it? And what are, who are you now? It was really sad, you know, to see someone that I thought was so brilliant, so funny, just glowing. She always had this glow to her. I wasn't there anymore, you know. It was like the light went out in her eyes. And we saw the same thing with Katie Holmes, didn't we? I mean, I think we all saw it happen where she was, you know, this Hollywood girl, you know. She was young and beautiful and all about Hollywood and starring in the latest movies and Tom Cruise came along and she changed. I mean, she definitely didn't seem happy. She seemed trapped. And, um, from what I understand, they had to have people around them at all times. They had to, she couldn't go anywhere alone. She couldn't clothe herself or her child. They had to do it for her. You know, everyone thought uh, Little Surrey Cruz was such a, you know, oh, she was so stylish. You know, she was the best dresser. Somebody dressed her. Not her, the mom. Not, nobody, yeah. It was just the, yeah, Scientologist. 
they had complete control over the whole situation. And so, oh, it's sad. Okay, so the Sea Org. It's a religious order where members can sign away their lives for a billion years. Yes, a billion years to cover their future lives, of course. Yeah. Members live on ships, working for minimum wage in communal living quarters, more like North Korea. From what I understand, they, it wasn't even like minimum wage. It was like nothing, like a few dollars here and there. It wasn't that big of a deal. They didn't have enough to leave, and they didn't know that they could leave. I think they felt trapped. Um, instead of funneling the money into private sex parties, whatever, um, the savings are used to buy church leader David Miscavige dogs, dogs treadmills and pay his servants to polish, polish his freaking light bulbs. Yeah, I get, you know, that guy, um, he's scary. He's scary. I've watched every documentary. I've read every book. This little fuck, I think he's like 5'2". It just kicks people up, kicks people's asses for no freaking reason. Like you'll just be walking down a hallway and he'll just be like kicking your ass out of nowhere. And they, people just put up with it and they're really scared of him. I don't know why. I don't know what, I don't think that when L. Ron Hubbard, I don't think when he was running it, it was this, this way, like a really scary cult where you're afraid and you get um, sent away, you know, like there's, they, they get sent to the hole. I mean, it's not really a hole, I don't think, but they, they put them in this private location inland. And I think it's Barstool. I'm not sure, but they lock them away. Certain people that, uh, speak out or get in trouble or whatever they do. If he doesn't like you, He'll put you away. His wife, his own wife, has been missing for like 15 years or 20 years. I don't even know. It's been a long time, though. And nobody knows where she is, but they think that's where she possibly could be. But the cops don't do anything about it because they're afraid. Because what they do, what, you know, the Scientologists do is they'll stalk you. You know, they'll stalk your ass. They'll threaten you. They'll make your life miserable. And it's really sad. And Tom Cruise, I think... He's given them too much. He's revealed too much. There's a lot. They tape every session you have, every single one. And if you don't give them enough, they'll keep pushing you and pushing you. And so I think Tom has sold his soul to the devil. He gave it, gave it all up. And so maybe a lot of it with him is fear because he doesn't seem like a happy guy. He fakes it. He fakes it really well with that fake smile, you know? But I think um, there's a lot going on there that we don't know about. Um, he let the Scientologist blackball Nicole Kidman out of their kids' lives. Yeah, that too. Um, I don't really know anything about that. But I do know they adopted two, two beautiful kids together. And the kids are alienated, you know, from her. They, She moved on. Thank God she got out. I mean, I just... <laughs> thank God. She seems really happy now and normal. Except she... She's gotten a little too much Botox. But other than that, she has, I think, two daughters and she's married. Keith Urban, they seem very happy. And, but yeah, it says, um, instead of having the uh, Kojons to walk away from this evil, soul sucking Scientology machine, he let them alienate him from his then wife, Nicole Kidman. So, so that's what I'm saying. He's lost two beautiful, lovely women because of this religion. And so I think they might have way more than we could ever imagine on him. I, I can't even imagine what it could be. Like John Travolta as well. I know that a friend of mine is was masseuse and um, he gave John a massage. He went to his trailer when they were filming North. I'm not going to say specifically where because then you're going to know where it's at. But he said that he was proposition. And then when he said no, um, John laughed at him and said, oh, my God, you, are you kidding me? Everybody knows. Everyone in this business knows, you know, and you're never going to make it in this business if you don't do this. And he's like, I'm a masseuse. Like, fuck off. But so everyone kind of knows that. And I think everyone, they're holding a lot of things over these people's heads. 
So he kept the kids away from their mother, who's a suppressor, suppressive, you know, Nicole Kidman, which is so sad. You know, they don't know her as mom anymore, really. They know that she's bad for them. And then he held interviews, number three. He held interviews to find suitable girlfriends and subsequently mind-fucked said girlfriend. I think everyone has read Maureen Orr's piece in Vanity Fair about Tom Cruise and Nassanin. I don't know her name. I'm just going to call it Nora from How I Met Your Mother. Okay. I didn't see that show, but uh, yeah. So um, Tom Cruise, the prodigal son of Scientology, needed an appropriate escort, this girl, Nora, whatever. At that time, a relatively unknown actress was chosen for the ma from the masses to be his political wife. It didn't matter that she was engaged to be married. Screw that. Who wants to be with the love of their life when they could be with Tom Cruise? You know what's sad is Katie Holmes grew up having the hugest crush on Tom Cruise. I think a lot of women did. I didn't. Like I said, the, the arrogance was really a big turnoff. But can you imagine? He's like, he chooses you of everyone. I remember how excited they both were. He was excited because he found like a power couple wife, you know, like it's going to be like Nicole Kidman again, you know, and this girl has a, had a crush on me since she was a child. And I remember like th being kind of happy for them, kind of like, well, you know what? She found, she's finally with Tom Cruise, her childhood crush and whatever. So he threw piles of Jerry Maguire money at their at her and convinced her that she was in love with him. Unfortunately, she didn't f uh, fan girl him enough for this, for his taste. He complained that she was not sufficiently demonstrative. I get more love from an extra than I get from you. Eventually he dumped Nora and she ended up in some Scientology rehab center. Okay. It's not funny. I'm sorry. That just it sounded funny where they abused her mentally, made her scrub toilets with a toothbrush until she left the church. Wow. Okay, I didn't know that part. I didn't know. I, they do. They, they'll throw you in somewhere, and they'll just, like... Okay, so what can we take from the story is that Tom Cruise has a lot in common with overly, overly attached girlfriend. He's short, and he shows it. So it's widely reported that Tom Cruise is 5'7". It's also widely reported that he is 170 cm lets everyone open up about good clears blah 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 yeah i don't really care about height it just whatever um but yet tom cruise has this crippling inability to accept this simple fact of life and just move on i'm sorry i cannot get behind a man who wears elevated shoes okay so i guess he wears elevated shoes yeah who cares who the fuck cares five he's kind of totally batshit insane <sighs> I think Scientology fucked his head up, for sure. He says some crazy shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when a respected publication like The Guardian dedicates a 900-word article purely to discuss your kookiness, let's just call an orange an orange and admit that Tom Cruise is a nutbag. Or a nutball. Whatever, uh, whenever it's the craziest jumping on Oprah's couch... Okay, you know, people make a lot of that story. You remember he jumped on her couch and he was all excited. And I think it was the way he jumped because he just jumped with both feet up on the couch. I didn't really think it was that weird. I mean, it looked weird and it was kind of funny. It was like, oh, that's funny. You just jumped on her couch. But um, he was in love and it was just like, it wasn't that big of a deal. That's not why I thought he, he was crazy. It was the Matt Lauer interview that made me think he was crazy. You know, anti... Um, depression drugs and all of that stuff okay so um she goes on and on about the couch incident and then um and then he apologizes for it he goes oh you know i'm so sorry about the the couch incident and i apologize why are you apologizing you're excited about being in love with someone and you jumped on a couch that's not why we don't like you <laughs> that's not even it Okay, Tom Cruise is creepy. See, I go along on the road with you. Okay, so I wanted to find that story that just came out. Everyone has a story about Tom Cruise. 
uh, Seth Rogen, who I'm not a big fan of, reveals strange encounter with Tom Cruise. Okay, I have to read it now. <laughs> I love Ben Stiller's impersonation of Tom Cruise. And I almost had a Tom Cruise impersonator come on and interview it with me. But he was kind of a diva, like Tom Cruise. Yeah, he was diva. He was a full-blown diva. What happened was, I think he's a great impersonator. I really do. I think he's a great actor. Not Tom Cruise, but the impersonator. But he left his notifications on while we were doing an interview. And he blamed it on my program. You know, my, my me. He blamed it on me, basically. And said, so when you get a different program, let me know. And I'm like, why don't you just turn off your notifications? How about that? Because this has never happened with anyone else. It's no big deal, but just why not that? So it was a really, it was just not worth my time. I just said, you know what? Fuck it. Um, Seth Rogen and Jed Ap Apatho. Apatho? Is it Apatho? Yeah. The one that puts all of his kids in all of his movies and yeah. He is great, though. I give him that. He's really funny. He does great movies. Once had a bizarre encounter with Tom Cruise in which the actor raved about Luis Farrakhan, blamed the uh, pharmaceutical industry for his nutty public image, and offered a lecture on Scientology. The Wild... Yeah, okay, it happened in 2006. Um, Rogan and Apatow were summoned to the Top Gun legend Topsa Mansion, blah, blah, blah. Um, basically they just got weirded out by him. Actually, I do like Rogan. I was thinking of somebody else. Um, it says Rogan said he sent something was weird as soon as he drove up and saw Cruz and his then wife, Katie Holmes, and their newborn baby, Suri, waiting to greet them. Holmes had a vague, please rescue me from this place <laughs> look on her face. Oh yeah, she's, she wanted out. Do you remember that Oprah interview where he went to their house and... Katie thought it would be the perfect time to escape. And so she's like, oh, I'm going to go out to the store. You know, I'll be back. And Tom got all weirded out. He's like, where, where, where are you going? You're going, to the, you're going to the store? Okay. Um, I love you. And she's like, I love you. And then Oprah goes, I love you, Katie. And it was the weirdest freaking moment I've ever seen. And I don't even like the Oprah, Oprah show. But I had to see this moment because it was so freaking weird. Somebody told me to watch it. And so, of course, I watched it like five or six times on YouTube. So look for that. It's weird. Yeah. Okay, so after Apatow, who directed, you know, yeah, 40, they just go into all the stuff he's done. <laughs> okay, Cruz explains. When Rogan asked what was behind it, the Top Gun star, uh, the pharmaceutical industry, because they, my exposure of their fraud, it cost them so much money that they're desperate, they're scrambling, and they're doing everything they can to discredit me. So I won't, so I won't hurt their cells anymore. That's what he said. Okay, that is kind of a weird moment. Okay, now that I see it, um, for what it is, <laughs> it wasn't just that he jumped on the couch. It was his hand gestures, his fucking face. He looks like he's high on drugs. That's what's so weird about Scientology. And he did kind of fuck her chair up. You know, it's a nice chair. Okay. When Ro Rogan gingerly asked, Big Pharma made you jump on Oprah's couch? <laughs> Cruz explained that the footage had been edited to make it look so much worse than it was. They do that all the time. You should see what they do to my friend Louis, uh, Louis Farhawk or whatever his name is. After, after Apato noted that their controversial religion leader had a history of blatantly anti-Semitic comments, Cruz rebutted that Farnham was great. See the media, he explains. They're distorting all of it. Take my religion, for example, Scientology. They make it seem so fucking different than it is. If you just gave me like an hour to tell you about it, you'd be like, no fucking way. No effing way. Okay, so he didn't say fucking. I have a feeling that they don't allow the word fuck in their religion. That was a Scientology, uh, that's what Scientology is. No effing way. In just one hour, I could completely change your minds. Rogan writes that both he and Apito politely declined Cruz's offer, just like I did with my friend, and they left. Okay, so that's just one of many, like, weird Tom Cruise stories. <sighs> okay, I'm going to be specific. Tom Cruise creeps me out. 
I'm trying to find that article that I just read and what led me to this rant about Tom Cruise and Scientology. And I know I'm going to probably die. So if something happens to me, just know that the Scientologist did it. Yeah, I don't know which they have a crew. I think they have a wrecking crew. Uh, okay, so he's in the news again because he did another version, another movie. Like I'm trying to figure out what movie it was because I haven't heard anything of it. Okay, like he like he's notorious for doing all of his own stunts. And don't ask me why he brags about it or why he'd want to. Maybe he does want to die. Maybe he's suicidal. I don't know. Because it would be so much easier just to have someone do it for him so they could get it done and not have to worry about the star of the film. So, um, he is the last man standing, the straightened, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> the straightest of some straight arrows. And according to some, the one and only A-list film star left in the world. That's bullshit. He is courageous, ageless, and fearless. But nevertheless, Tom Cruise slightly gives me the creeps. It's irrational. It's unfair, but I can't help it. Yeah, I get you, girl. I get it. In the big... Jane Book of Bad, my groundless beefs against Tom include the oppression of his, of his sincerity, the thickness of his hair, his continually his continuing devotion to daredevil -y and lavish humanity he extends at every opportunity. No one asks Gene Kelly, why do you dance? Why do you do your own dancing? He said this week when someone asked him why he does his own stunts. So modest. Okay, here he is with, um, God, what actor is this? She looks like Jennifer Connelly. Is that who that is? And he's got that creepy fucking smile again. You know that, you know that, <laughs> like, you don't want to open a door and see that. Or, like, imagine, for some reason, like, imagine you're going to get in your shower, you open it, and that's what you see. You see this. You see Tom Cruise's crazy face. <laughs> I feel like it's over for me. It's so over. I'm done for. He's approaching his 60th birth birthday. Tom is the Dorian Gray of action films, a man who will strap himself in the outside of a few slids, the way the most men will strap themselves inside a car, blah, 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 blah. Um, they, even Daniel Craig lost stuntmen and experts to take over. But, you know, Tom thinks he knows everything about everything. You know, and he wants to blame everyone for his problems. You know, the phartosimical companies. Over the years, Cruz has burnished, burnished his reputation as a risk taker. Blah, 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 blah. There's one thing that Hollywood hero is scared of, old ladies. That's where he draws the line. I don't even know what she's talking about. At the genuine and the realistic. And that is his biggest crime of all in my book. That's what she says. Um... In case you somehow missed the onslaught of publicity, Cruz, Cruz's hotly anticipate, anticipated new film, Top Gun, Maverick. Okay, yeah. I didn't like the first one, and I don't know why they made it a second, but whatever. I guess he needed the money to give to Scientology. Scientology? I don't know. It has taken 36 years for the sequel to, to the 80s classic to be made. 36 years. Maybe it wasn't meant to be done then. <laughs> if it takes that long, it just wasn't meant to be. So he returns as the same character, and there's a special appearance by Val Kilmer. Where has he been? I really like Val Kilmer. So Kilmer, 62, lost his voice to throat cancer. Oh, man. That's really sad. Fuck. <sighs> Sorry, I just, I didn't know that, so I'm kind of, oh, okay, I'm moving on. Despite the fact that this is a sequel, there is no role for the two actresses who are beating emotional heart of, on the original film, who are the beating heart of the original film. Uh, nothing for Kelly McGillis, now age 64, who I love. Where, the, where has she been? She's amazing. Who played Maverick's girlfriend? And Top Gun instructor Charlie 
And it's not even mentioned in the new film. And nothing for Meg Ryan, 60, who plays Carol, the wife of the then widow of Madrick's best friend, Goose, and mother of his son, Bradley. Carol returns, but is played by actress Jean-Louise Kelly. I don't know who that is. Who is 10 years younger than poor old Meg. So typical of Hollywood to do that. This means Jean was actually only 14 when the original film was made and would have given birth to her fictitious son, Bradley, when she was only 10 years old. But, you know, hey, that's Hollywood. Okay, so for some reason he's with the, the princess and the print, whatever. Yeah, here he is. And he's, I don't know, he's kneeling for her or whatever. Princess Kate. We all know that the film industry is no place for old women. I think it has a lot to do with surgery, too. I think that um, once a woman hits a certain age and she starts getting surgery, it's hard for them to cast them. Um, because I see people like Laura Lin Linney, who's so beautiful, so freaking talented. And you could tell she has nothing done. Like, she really hasn't had anything done. And she's still working. And I think it's... I think you have to play your age is what it is. You know, like some women like Meg, Meg had a lot of surgery done and I love Meg Ryan. I will always love her. She was like the queen of romantic comedies in the eighties and nineties. And come on, no one else could do it better except Sandra Bullock or Jennifer Aniston, but she was the queen even over them. But she had a lot of surgery done and though I still adore her, I could kind of see why she doesn't get work. And it's sad, really. She was trying to compete with the younger women and you just can't do that. So until people start casting these women their age and not worrying about their wrinkles or whatever, then it's it's going to be like this. Ugh, okay, so yes, if age is allowed to pass at all in Hollywood, it's only on the faces of men, not women. Yeah, it's always the men. They could age. They could age as much as they, they need to or however they, you know what I mean? It's... Actresses and big stars such as Sandra Bullock, Julia Roberts, Nicole Kidman, Jennifer Aniston have all carried out on working in their 50s and beyond. Yeah, it's true. They have the most natural work done, I think. Sandra Bullock, you could tell she's had some fillers. And Julia Roberts, she looks the same. She just looks the same. I, she did a, whoever, If she had work, she did a great job. Nicole Kidman, yeah, the Botox is a little much. She's still beautiful. Jennifer Aniston, she is exactly the same. I love her for that. She's like, you know what? I just, this is me. I'm going to keep the same damn haircut. I'm not doing anything to it. It's just, it's awesome. But Kelly McGillis ruled herself out of the new Top Gun role by saying that she was too old and fat. For return performance, I look age appropriate for what my age is. And that is not what the whole scene is about. That makes me sad that she said that. I mean, she acknowledged that that's the way they think. And um, that's just sad. She's right, of course. It's only men like Tom who, who can cruise on forever, assuring their place. And yeah, he doesn't have a new love interest in the film. He d Wait, he does have a new love interest in the film. A character played by Jennifer Connelly, who is 51. But come on, she could be past, she could be past for a dozen years younger at least. Yeah, totally. Uh, it says, all of a sudden, my least favorite man is everywhere. He's on red carpets at Cannes. He's bought a house in Biggin Hill. He's sending his famous Tom, Tom Cruise coconut cakes to everyone. He even turned up at the fi uh, finale of the Royal Windsor Horse Show a few days ago, trotting around like a prize Stalin. The prize Stalin that he is, flicking his new luxurious and I don't know he just being like a horse whatever some accused him of turning the historical pageant to mark the start of the Queen's Platinum Jubilee celebration into the Tom Cruise show totally but I like to think perhaps he was there in person to tell her Madge that just like Jen for and Meg she also felt to get a role in his new film on account of her age see I'm wondering if Tom Cruise is behind this ageism or it's just how it is, you know, maybe it's not his fault. We don't know. Or maybe we do. 
Uh, Why does he try so hard to make everyone like him? For me, the uncomfortable suspicion lingers that it has to do with this role as a leading Scientologist and that underpinning all of his generosity and charm <sighs> is a wish to promote not just a film, but also his chosen religion. Yeah. Okay, I'm just moving on because she's creeped out by him, so I want to know more. Of course, I want to know more. <laughs> because I wonder if it's the same reasons that I... I don't... I'm not creeped out by him. I just don't like him. As an actor, I choose not to watch his movies. He annoys me a little bit because he's so over the top. You know, it's like, calm the fuck down. And he always tries to act smarter than everyone else. I hate people like that. They always think that they're smarter than you. And they're not. And it's just... Yeah, shut the fuck up. I said, fuck. I'll never be allowed into that religion, even if I wanted to. No, if you have enough money, you could get in. I think Leah Remedy said she gave them millions, millions of dollars. Uh, what crimes are going to be, okay, at home with the dual dad, da, da, da. I'm trying to get to, you know, some articles just go on and on. A uh, little wonder that Netflix has axed 40 year old Megan's animated series, Pearl, why interest in Harry's whatever. So she's talking about the difference between something that Tom Cruise does as a man in the business being of a certain age, over 60 years old and the women over 40 uh, don't get the same type of... So it's really not his fault, per se. Yes, he's creepy, you know, I, I guess. I don't really care about him. But I care about him enough to talk about him for 46 minutes, <laughs> mostly about the religion, mostly about my experience with the religion. I think I've talked about it before, though. And um, the fact that he's kind of making a slight comeback, but... I don't think of it like that at all. He looks his age, though. He does. You know, I don't I don't find him attractive. I just don't. I never have. It has nothing to do about height. I could care less how tall I'm. Well, they have to be, like, taller than me a little bit, you know. I just... But, yeah, he's hanging around and just making himself seen, and he's annoying. Oh, okay, Jan Moyer for the Daily Mail wrote this on May. 19th. She's a good writer. She really is. You should check the article out. But I just, there's so much more to this. There really is. Okay, I've been going off for way too long. I don't even know what I'm thinking. I have to wake up early. <sighs> okay, so I'm still editing my book. It's taking longer than I thought because there's uh, work being done at the house. New flooring put in. There's some construction going on, which is good. It's a long time coming. You know, now that the house is paid off and what have you, I could finally like fix it up the way that it's meant to be. But it's, it's taken a lot. It's taken a lot of selling a lot of things and, you know, it, out with the old in with the new. It's all about that. All right. So like I said, if I end up dead, it's, it's the Scientologist. And you can't really do anything. So um, you could tell everyone about it. But the thing is that they, nobody cares. Nobody freaking cares. They own the police department. I don't know how. But yeah, Tom Cruise, annoying. Not a fan. I don't know. Actually, what movie did I think he was kind of funny in? With Cameron Diaz. If you know what it is, uh, just, you know, let me know. I like Cameron Diaz is what it is, but they worked really well together in this movie. And it's not the one um, where it's like a dream. What is that freaking movie called? It's like three in the morning. I'm like, I don't know, but it's very funny. And, you know, he, he's good sometimes. He's good. All right, everyone. Uh, peace out. I'm going to go to sleep. And yeah, if anything good comes up, I'll let you know.